This is Dip Nip Dork Radio Broadcast, episode number one, recorded live on Sunday, October 28th, 2012. Well, forget about it. This is not something new. I'm not suddenly going to be into dip nibs or anything, but I do own a fair amount of dip nibs, and I recently did a video on fountain pen nibs and nib materials, and I suggested there that I could, in principle, also do a video on um, dip nibs. And uh, some of you were quite enthusiastic, so I'll, I'll, I mean, I gladly do that. I can't say I have a huge collection, but I, I have my share, I guess. Uh, and today I wanted to show you some dip nibs. Most of these are by the German company Brause, which I think makes very nice uh, dip nibs. I think that is the same company as Gerbin. I think that's like one big uh, uh, mother company. Uh, these nibs are pretty good. Some of them are really made to be flexible. Some are really made for gothic script. I want to show you them all. Um, I am not going to do <coughs> usually extensive writing samples, and one of the reasons for that is that a lot of these nibs don't have ink reservoirs, which means that in, there is some contraption on the nib, or sometimes under the nib, that holds a drop of ink, and that allows for longer writing. So with a lot of these nibs, especially when you flex them, um, you, you can pretty much write one letter, maybe two. So if I were to do the quick brown fox for all of those nibs, this would be a very long video, and I don't think that would be interesting. So what I do is I give you my impression of the nib, I show you how flexible it is, uh, and, and that's pretty much it. And I have done that for, let me see, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 pens, two glass pens, and the rest of them are regular uh, dip metal nibs. So, the ink I'll be using is Nootless Axe Feather or Anti Feather. That's my favorite uh, nib, uh, sorry, ink for, for calligraphy. It's very dark, it's a little thick, so it, it, seem, it tends to, to flow well in these uh, uh, dip nibs. And uh, that's pretty much it. So, I hope this is going to be useful. This is not an extensive overview of all the dip nibs ever made because that is not possible. This should get you started, and, and you know, if you're looking for a specific uh, property like, like flexibility or something like that, and then you can probably. Uh, uh, you know, get some information here. I, I hope it's going to be useful. So that's all there's to it, and um, I think we should do some writing. So I'll see you later. Bye bye. Okay, so I I'm going to do some dip nib stuff now. I have a, a number of nibs there, uh, and I only have three of these holders, so I have to switch nibs. So you just have to bear with me. The, the, the sw tw switching of nibs is going to take a while. That's all I'm saying. Okay, so first of all, I will start with a nib called Steno, also known as the Blue Pumpkin because it's a, a somewhat bluish colored nib. Um, grab some paper too. Right, okay, so there we go. Steno. This is one of my favorite dip nibs um, because it does this. So as you can see here, you've got some pretty amazing flex, um, and uh, that's all there's to it. Now this this nib does not have an ink reservoir, just a slit there. But it does so that means it runs out of ink fairly quickly. See I'm already railroading. Now I could probably go on a little bit with some regular writing, but you run out of ink pretty quickly. Still it's it's a very decent nib and, and one that I, I really like. Um, clearly this is made for, for scripts, you know, like like copper plate-ish style scripts where you you have these different lines line widths. I'm not, I'm not a copper plate guy. See, I'm already screwing up here. But you have these pressure, you have pressure on the downstrokes and no pressure on the upstrokes and that gives you a difference. Now, so that's that's pretty much what, what, what we've got here. Um, an interesting nib, one that, that does run out of ink uh, fairly quickly. Then we have a nib called Rose. 
in other words, rose, like the flower. Uh, that is a nib, and uh, that is, I'm just putting it in my holder here, uh, it's, it's called rose, it is actually, I'm not take it out again to show you, it actually has a rose embedded in the nib, not sure how well you can see that, uh, but believe me, it's, it's there. Okay, I'm smearing my holder with ink, that's great, now I'm getting it on my fingers. The rose is marketed as being super elastic, so some type of, of super flex. Uh, well, let's, uh, let's put it to the test. I can't even make it to write. Okay, there we go. Rose. Oh yeah, that is indeed super flexy. The only thing is, I can't make it. Now that is flex, but it uses up so much ink, and it has no ink reservoir, that you lose the ability to write on fairly quickly. Still, it goes from a very thin line to a monstrous line. The only problem is, you need to go very slow for that. But as you can see here, if you compare that with this, you see that this is one hell of a nib. So if flex is what you need, I think this is the most flexible nib that Browser makes. And again, that would be for something... Of course, I was overdoing it there, but... Something copper plate-ish. And you see, already I'm running out of ink after just two lessons and a bit, so... For me, this is impractical. I, I am not willing to dip my nib after every single letter I write. That is way too tedious. So it's a great nib, it's just not really something I would use on a daily basis. Okay, take that out. Then we go to the index finger nib, which is fairly aptly named uh, if you uh, realize that it actually looks like an index finger. This reminds me of the Thing. I'm sorry I cannot remember the name that Jewish people use to read from the Torah. You know, they, they sort of have this sort of pointing object, often shaped like a finger. Um, that's what this reminds me of. Now this thing is hard. So here we have the... I'm holding it the right way up. Yeah, I immediately feel this is harder. So this is the index finger. Writes nicely. It's always a bit scratchy, but it's, that's, that's what dip nibs do. They have no tipping material, no iridium boil, balls, etc. So, Okay, so this is hard. I am pushing down quite hard on it now, but this is the biggest amount of line variation I can get out. Which is actually not that bad. If you have ink. For me, that's a nice bit of line variation, but it is hard, so it's not actually meant to flex. Uh, so you could use this for some type of, of mono-lined uh, fonts that always have the same line width, like, you know, regular cursive or, or some other uh, font types that, that, you know, do not require line variation. I'm just wiping off the nib there, and then we move to something called Cheeto. As far as I know, Cheeto is not a German word. I know it means fast in Latin, or quickly. Uh, this nib is marketed as being semi-flex, and this has an ink reservoir. I probably shouldn't have dipped it, because now it's hard to show. I'll show you that when I clean it. Uh, so, Cheeto fine. So what have we got here? Yeah, okay, so this would indeed, I would call that semi-flex. They're right. So you get some line variation, but it's not nearly as big as what you see there. Um, so what, what would you use this for? Semi-copper plate? I'm not sure. You can squeeze out some line variation. Remember, this is, this is just, it has just been dipped, so it's very wet now. Um, if you ride on for a bit, then it will get 
bit drier and won't give this huge line variation anymore. Semi copper plate or something. So I wipe this nib clean and then I can show you that right there you see this sort of bowl thing with a hole in it that's the ink reservoir. So a drop of ink gets stuck there and then sort of I guess flows through the hole. And we'll write. Okay, then we have l'écolière. L'écolière is uh, what's that? That's like I think that's a person going to school, like a, a pupil. L'écolière, and this is a oh, it doesn't doesn't go in my nib holder. I have to bend. So you got these, uh, you probably can't see that very well, you've got these metal teeth in there. Sometimes they bend a little too far and you've got to bend them back a little. You can easily do that with the back end of the nib. But this is a very fine nib, which is very difficult to put in there, I'm afraid. It just won't go in. And if it goes in, it goes in too far. Okay, well, okay, okay, I got something. Okay, got I have something going here, but it's not a very tight fit. Okay, so what we have here is a very fine nib, which is called l'écolière, the, uh, the, 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 the pupil, the student. Uh, this is marketed as being a hard nib. It's going to fall out. This has no ink reservoir. <coughs> Sorry. What you should do when you do real calligraphy is not just start writing after dipping. You take something, I have an old envelope here, and you, you put down a few lines to get the excess ink off. I'm not doing that now, so this will look a little wetter than it would usually be. Um, if I would first wipe it off a little bit, we get something like this. This is indeed a hard nib, it has no ink reservoir, and now it's fallen into the ink well because it was too loose. I told you that would happen. Always good to know that you can actually predict the future. So, I've taken it out, it wasn't a deep ink well. Um, this nib is pretty hard, and it's actually, well, what's that then? What's that then? That's not hard. This is not a hard nib. This is at least semi-flex. Well, that's very strange. Why did they market it as hard? This is not hard at all. Okay. Well, that's good to know. Now we move on to a nib called Pfannen. I'm not sure why it's called Pfannen. I mean... It could be like a roof tile, the shape but I'm, I'm not absolutely certain of that. So this is marketed as being reinforced elastic. Let's put that to the test. This is the smoothest one I've used so far. Of course it has no ink reservoir, so it's dipping every few seconds. some of the excess ink there. Oh, that's nice. That's a nice bit indeed of at the very least semi-flex. Not bad. And this is a very, as I said, this is a very smooth nib. This doesn't feel so scratchy. Okay, well then I have the bansug. Now, these come in a bunch of line widths. I'm going to take the widest one I have to show you. Uh, as you can see, if you uh, 
know something about fountain pens, then you can probably recognize this as being an italic nib, uh, because it's cut at a slanted angle. Now these nibs are great when you're doing stuff like Gothic calligraphy. Um, very sharp lines uh, they allow for, and I really like these. Uh, so they, 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 uh, you can get them very fine, like this, very fine little nib. Uh, this is, I think, half a millimeter. Or one millimeter, yes. Uh, I think you can also get them in half a millimeter, but I'm not absolutely sure. This is five millimeters, so I think that's the widest one they have. Um, and I think that for the demonstration, I'll use something that's in between. Uh, this is a three millimeter Bansug. Notice that little weird loopy thing on top, that's an ink reservoir. And that's great because that means you can actually write more than just one letter before you have to re-dip it again. I'll dip it in the ink, we'll see what happens. And then I'll do a quick rub to get off some of the excess ink, there we go. Okay, so here we have a Bansug. running dry now, but you've seen I've written way more than with any of those other nibs. So this, for allow, this allows for pretty fine lines and much broader lines, which are great when you're trying to offset stuff um, in the gothic manner. I'm doing this fairly quickly, although this is not my best uh, calligraphy ever, but just to give you an idea. So, this, because of its italic shape, it really allows for this, this offsetting of very thin and very wide lines. That's a very nice nib, and, and this is one I, I, I use quite a bit when I'm doing Gothic calligraphy. Um, so, there we have that. Now we have a very interesting nib called the Ornament. In other words, Ornament. Um, this is very typical, as you can see here. Uh, this has a very round bit right there, uh, and it has an ink reservoir. Um, actually, I think both on top and below it. So, and these things do hold a lot of ink. These are for artistic purposes, but also for um, fonts where you want every line to have the same width. So, in copper plate, you want the exact reverse, right? You want upstrokes to be narrow and then downstrokes to be bold. Uh, with with Gothic you have, this is not the best Gothic because it, the letters are too small for the nib, but just to give you an idea, you really want to have thinner lines, you want to have wider lines, but with these nibs you want to have lines that are always the same width, and that's why that little ball that's for. So what you get, this is the widest, I have them in uh, a bunch of uh, widths, I, I forgot how wide this is, but it's just, just to give you an idea. So ornament doesn't allow for line variation, apart from of course you know, applying more and less pressure, that could you could cheat a little bit, but in, in principle you will always get a line width that is that wide. compare this with that. So, this is, I think, mainly for artistic purposes. You can really paint with ink and lay down a lot of ink very quickly. Look at how much uh, these ink reservoirs hold um, without running dry. 
Um, so that's what I use them for. Sometimes when you do some calligraphy, you want to draw something on the side, or maybe create a background in specific ink color. Well, these nibs are great for that. And that's mainly what I use that for. I hardly ever use it to to write with because that's not. I mean, this is not something I'm I'm very good at. As you can see here, I, I don't really I don't know any scripts that, that would work with that. Okay, then we come to some pretty scary nibs. Um, called placard. Uh, these are made in a couple of sizes. Uh, this is a, a 10 millimeter nib, so this is really wide. If you compare that to that little, well, what do we have? This this Cheeto Fine, then you see there's a, a bit of a difference there. Um, these nibs are made for a single purpose, and that is to lay down huge amounts of ink. So placard, here we have the 10 millimeter version it will lay down a line that is one centimeter wide if it writes so this is useful if you do for example very large gothic um, and you're, you, you really you know, you do very big stuff like this. It's great for that um, stretch. So that would be the 10 millimeter version. I also have a 15 millimeter version, which is, I think, the biggest browser makes. I think there are other companies who also make these things like three centimeters wide. Um, this nib just fits in the inkwell I'm using right now. It really, if it would be one millimeter wider, it wouldn't fit anymore. So what you get here is a huge line, uh, which is very good for painting cars or, you know. Huge lettering. As you can see, you run out of ink pretty quickly. So this is basically just a triangle with holes in there so that the ink gets stuck in the in the middle part of the triangle and then it sort of drips out. Um, huge, huge. The, the bad part, you know, what's, what's the downside of this is that you have these holes and those holes will show up as a comb. Come on, stay open! My notepad wasn't agreeing with me. Um, so you get this sort of comb shape. Now there's one more thing I'd like to show you. I'll take this off. I mean the paper. I tear the, I just tore the paper from the pad. I wasn't actually taking any clothes off or anything. Uh, okay, so the final thing I'd like to show you. I've done a separate review of this panel a long time ago. Um, what we have here is a glass dip pen. Now you know the dip I, could, I might as well show you that. Here I have one of those Gerbin, if we're talking about dip nibs, this is a Gerbin glass pen. Uh, the nib of this broke off at some point, but I, I smoothed it out with some micro mesh. So these these glass nibs were, were pretty hot at some type, time in, in Venice, uh, for example, uh, and, and they're just glass. Which is not necessarily as smooth as you might expect it would be, it has some type of feedback. Um, glass nib, this is Gerbin. These pens are very useful for trying out inks, for example. So it's that's uh, something you, you can do. They, they offer pretty much no line variation because it's it's just a bit of glass, right? There's no nib tines uh, spreading open. Although you can exert a bit more and a bit less pressure to, to, to get some line variation. Um, but as I said, these are mainly useful for testing out new inks. Um, and they, you know, that's that's it's pretty useful for that. Now, I was in an art exhibition at some point, and I in Amsterdam, and I found this pen. I thought, well, that looks kind of cute. This is glass too, but it has a metal section, and it has a metal dip nib, and it has an ink reservoir. Now, I was very interested in seeing what exactly this would do because um, I was expecting a fairly basic uh, dip nib that would just, you know, function and probably not have any line variation. Well, I was wrong.
So what we have here is a very flexible nib. I will just call this glass pen. Flex nib. Maybe it doesn't look particularly flexy right now. I'll put a little bit more ink on there. This, I think, is a beautiful amount of flex. And it's much nicer than what I seem to get from those browser nibs. Because this has a an ink reservoir, the, the, the amount of ink that is supplied is much more steady. And now I'm using a pretty thick ink here, so it, it seems to have some issues with that every now and then. But I think this is a beautiful amount of flex. This is something that I could use for copper plate, if in fact I could do copper plate, which I can't. But, I mean, this is... It's a very nice... I mean, this, this first thing I showed you, the rose, this is extreme. But because it has no ink reservoir, it's really writing one letter and then dipping again. Whereas with this one, you can go on. So occasionally, I use this pen... to sign letters, for example. And it's excellent for that. So, there you have it. Those were a lot of dip nibs. I hope this was useful. Um, I hope you found something that's interesting to you and some maybe some some nibs that you'd like to check out for you know to to, to get or, or maybe nibs you you owned you weren't sure how to use. So I I hope this is a bit of an an, an overview um, and. Um, well, that's, that's all there's to it, so uh, I'll see you later. Bye-bye.